Hi folks, it's Florida Man here. Today I'm bringing you an after action report on a game I played on Play Diplomacy. The game was called Fair Play Ha Ha Ha, and I took over the surrendered Italian position. In addition to narrating my own perspective, I will also be narrating the perspective of the Austrian player who wrote a script for me because he believed his accent might be too thick for YouTube stardom. So please enjoy my terrible, terrible, no good, rotten, really bad attempt at a Scottish accent which lapses at times into an Irish accent, English accent, possibly a Boston accent, no accent at all, and every accent in between. In addition to some accents you probably will not recognize and that I might not recognize. Should be fun. My Scottish ancestors are rolling in their graves. Without further ado, please enjoy. The Austrian Perspective This game was frustrating for me. It was my first official solo on the site but the game was plagued by surrenders. I don't really feel like I earned the win, even if it is there. Still, I do feel some compulsion to write a report on it, as my tactics, and my poisoning the water tactic in particular, might have aided my victory. Upon joining the game, I immediately put my head in my hands and sighed. Austria! I'd drawn it. The country that raises such intrigue among professionals yet also a country which has the highest death rate. I did not fancy my chances at this game. Little did I know how wrong I was. Spring 1901. I began the game the way I would begin any game of diplomacy. I reached out to every player on the board. This time, however, I reached out from a place of weakness. In my initial negotiations, I was wary of what I was saying, and I always told the other nations that I felt threatened by everyone else. I offered England an alliance of information sharing. Nothing came from that agreement, but being close to England from the get-go helped me in the long run. I offered France a similar alliance of intel sharing. Again, nothing directly came of it, but I think opening that door early helped me in the long run. I knew from the get-go that I absolutely did not want to work with Turkey. From my diplomacy research, I know that Austria-Turkey never works but it is always best to let the Turkish player think I want to be in an alliance with them against Russia. So that is what I offered Turkey, even if I never wanted to act on it from the start. The first Russian player failed to enter orders and surrendered in fall 1901. This Russian did not send me any messages, so in my head I was his target. Thus, my moves in spring 1901 were very anti-Russian. The most fruitful of my convocations was between Italy and Germany. With Germany, I offered them a DMZ of Bohemia. It was Germany's response that made my eyes shine. Germany said Italy had offered central alliance to them, and that was important to me for two reasons. One, it meant Italy trusted me, which is what I wanted. Two, it meant Germany wanted to be in that alliance, which is good for me as I did not want to be trapped between Germany, Turkey, and Russia without at least one of those being an ally. Additionally, I always saw Germany as part of my medium to long-term goals. With Italy, our arrangements really went back and forth. I told them that any competent Turkish player would see a Lepanto a mile off, so what I offered was a key Lepanto and a blue water Lepanto. Neither was accepted by the Italian player. In the end, we committed to a normal Lepanto. When the orders processed, I immediately sm smelled the opportunity that presented itself. Russia had not moved a single unit. If I was to ask Turkey nicely, I could get myself a build in Romania at some stage if the Russians stayed inactive. I planned in my head to use that build against Turkey, providing that the next Russian was a little more forgiving of my opportunism. The only other comment was France. Italy, Germany, and England all entered almost predictable moves. The French did not. My messages in the fall period were brief. Turkey, whether by accident or not, had gained control of the Balkans, which meant they must be eyeing up Russia, even if they originally wanted to take me out. Turkey and I congratulate ourselves, and agree to divide up the Balkans between us later. Taking advantage of the situation, I decided to make a bold move. Galicia into Ukraine. There were two reasons for this. One, I would get a build in Budapest. That way I could move Ukraine down into Romania with support from Budapest if the new Russian would play ball. Two, I could offer Romania to Turkey if the new Russian did not play ball. And then I could help them into St. Petersburg. 
Option two would see me have my tail between my legs, but I would have secured the Turkish trust. Spring, 1902. Pleasing the Ice Queen. To my surprise, New Russia forgave me. More so than that. They offered me an anti-Turkish alliance. Additionally, I said to Russia rather boldly that they should give me Romania for now, if only to prevent Turkey from getting it. And Russia accepted. I also told Russia to send Sebastopol round the back to hit Turkey. To cement the alliance, I told Russia that Italy and I were doing the Lepanto against Turkey. That way, it would be in, in Russia's interest to side with me over Turkey. With all that in mind, I told my allies that Turkey was the target, and the Lepanto was going ahead. All I can really say about this, it sucks to be Turkey. Additionally, England gets in touch with me to say that Germany and France cannot be trusted. This is another opportunity for me. I promise England support against France and Germany, while also telling them that England is spreading rumors about them. This turned out to be an interesting development for me. Fall 1902. What annoyed me about this turn was that the German player kept up their assault of Russia. I needed Russia to take out Turkey. I needed Russia to be strong, even just for the short term. So I essentially offered Russia the chance to move into Galicia. From there, I would be able to defend them in a defense recapture of Warsaw. A move into Galicia would give me a lot of options, too. I could choose to maintain my agreement with Russia, or choose to uphold my alliance with the Central Powers. To maintain my alliance with Russia, I offered them the lion's share of the Turkish spoils. Thankfully, New Russia is still on my side, and again the advantage is very much to me. 1903. I conveyed the message England sent me to France, and France sent everyone a message of bravado saying they are going for the solo. I love that, and I told them such. I think this is the, so the start of the French-Austrian alliance. I told France I respected them, and we moved on. The most interesting message in diplomacy history. Maybe a bit of an exaggeration, but Russia sent me a message that hit me. Russia told me to move into St. Pete to defend it for them. Russia told me to move into Sevastopol to defend it for them. I commended the Russian on a very bold move, and then said I would happily defend it, and then give it back. I worried that such a move would make me look too strong to other players, but still. A build is a build. I also supported Russia to hold in Warsaw. That way I ensured my trust with them. Italy messaged me asking for Greece. Interesting. I gave Italy Greece for the sole purpose of keeping our alliance alive. Italy asking for concessions from me becomes a constant theme within this game. Fall 1903 goes the way I expected. Italy and I began to wrap Turkey. I stayed and held Sevastopol for that extra build while also moving up to Ukraine to provide extra coverage for Russia, or myself in Sevastopol if needs be. With Turkey tied up, I began to look elsewhere for my new target. With my own unit in Sevastopol and England looking for my help, my next target was obvious. The Ice Queen. Russia herself. Spring 1904. Remember at the start, when I said this game was full of surrenders? Well, here's where it begins. Turkey leaves and is replaced by another Turkey. New Turkey offers me an alliance and complete loyalty. I was late to respond to this message, and I really wish this Turkey had stayed because I almost took them up on that offer. But they left before I could reply. Oh well. I ask my allies, Italy and Germany, what the strategy is now that Turkey is gone. I suggest that Germany and I go for Russia. Germany agrees and tells me to move into Moscow, eliminating the retreating English unit, and from there I can support their unit in Warsaw. Sadly, support was cut by new, new Turkey, allowing Russia into Moscow and England to take Warsaw. Fall 1904. I take England under my wing. England offers me Moscow here. In exchange for Moscow, England asks if I can support them later. Knowing I would need to stab Germany, and seeing that they were under attack by France, I took them up on that offer. It's also in this turn that I realized the possibility of a solo might exist, and the only person to be able to stop the solo would be Italy. Italy asked what I wanted to do with my, with my unit in the Aegean Sea. I told them simply that I wanted to park it in the Adriatic Sea, therefore allowing me to defend Trieste. It was always in my mind to use that fleet defensively. Even still, 
If it was in the Adriatic Sea, I could use it offensively if push came to shove and I was desperate. It's at this point that Italy blasts me for moving into Tyrolia. Fair comment, really. I tried to defuse it by telling Italy that it was there purely to defend Germany if it needed to. I do not think they bought that. Additionally, I say it is to open my centers for builds. Again, flimsy excuses. As the orders process, I get into Moscow and Italy does not attack me. My fumble with Italy is not really a fumble. I was lucky not to be in a war on two fronts. Additionally, Germany and France being at loggerheads helps me massively. Spring 1905. England asked me to use my Moscow unit to support them into Livonia. I do not want to do this. At this point, I kind of want to stay loyal to Germany, especially since they've managed to patch things up with the French. Additionally, with France ravishing England, I did not see it in my interest to help the English player. I don't want to go down with a sinking ship, after all. If I am to bounce Livonia, though, I realize I need to keep Moscow safe, so I also move Sevastopol to defend. Fall 1905. Change of heart. At this point in the game, I am flip-flopping about, not trying to commit to either Germany or England, while also trying to remain as close to both as I possibly can. But I believe it's at this point in the game where I pull my weight in with England. I lie to my back teeth to England and tell them that I incorrectly entered orders that season, and they seem to believe it. Most, most still, they, still, they tell me to move Moscow into Livonia while moving Ukraine into Livonia. That way I surround Russia and can administer the fatal blow to them. For this, all England requires is that I support them to hold Warsaw, an agreement I keep to, being a strong believer of the principle, defend the weak and weaken the strong. It is this round, too, that I sneak into Armenia. I told the old Italian player this was purely for security, but really, it was to plot out my late game solo strategy. It is absolutely at this point in the game where I consider the solo for myself. However, to try and keep Italian favor, I move away from Tyrolia. Spring 1906. Before the orders were finalized for this season, I knew that I wanted to fully commit to England and defending the weak in this game. I also knew that Russia had to go this season. I needed to begin my expansion westward. In my sights were Norway and Sweden. Additionally, I wanted to get Warsaw. However, I wanted to take Warsaw with English permission. My plan, therefore, was to help England defend Warsaw, while, while also hoping Germany wouldn't see my betrayal. The only real surprise here was that Germany held, and England moved into Portugal. I did try and bait Italy into Trieste, therefore allowing me to justify aggression against them. But alas, it did not work. One of my tactics is to try and bait a war with someone. If they attack me, I can go cap in hand to the rest of the countries and plead for support. This time, it did not work. No matter, though, it means I'm not fighting a war on two fronts. Additionally, with France and Italy now at war, I could relax knowing that Italy would not try and open a war on two fronts. My solo plan starts to look like this. Take the Scandinavian countries. March through Germany with England. Take the German centers with England. Take any remaining centers from the Baltic and Italy. Fall 1906. Given that Germany did not enter any orders, I immediately turned to Italy and asked them if they would want to stab the now vacant player. They told me to wait. Unfortunately for Italy, though, I now plan to st stab Germany with or without them. The message to Italy was simply to persuade Italy that they commanded me. Makes up for moving into Armenia without their permission. England and I, and I begin to talk frantically about our shared strategy. England says they have convinced Italy to allow them to have Portugal. I told England to try and make up with France, given that France and Italy are at war. England then offered to help me into Silesia. This does not work out, and given that I moved into Bohemia this season, it is evidence that I have stabbed Germany. Spring 1907. This turn, England and I make the plan to get England into Prussia. I say that this is the best option for England, as it should get them Berlin, and from Berlin they could possibly look to stay in the game. Additionally, Italy asks me to move out of Armenia. I oblige in the fall. Naturally, I want to keep Italy on my side. I knew from the start of the game that Italy and Germany have been in cahoots with one another. If I'm gunning for Germany, the last thing I need is the Italian cavalry coming to their rescue. Once again, this is a turn in which everything goes in my favor. The West are eating each other, with no gains from any of them. Fall 1907 is the moment I gave up on the solo. What I envisioned as being a quick war in Germany ultimately ends up being a long conflict. 
Additionally, the way Italy is set up, it looks as though they'll be able to pick up a few centers. In my head, at least, this game is going to be a two-way draw between Italy and I. I agree to help England get into Sweden. I agree to help England get into Sweden from Norway. This order does not work. Additionally, England agreed to, help to get me into Silesia. This again did not work. Fall 1907 is the midpoint of the game, and game fatigue appears to set in. I get a bit frustrated with the speed of the game, and because my orders ultimately amounted to nothing, I begin to see final victories slipping away. Like watching a beautiful sunset at noon. Spring 1908. Florida Man arrives. I'm a big fan of Florida Man, but when he joined as the New Italy, I didn't even notice. I guess I was blinded by the light of my impending victory. Around the time that the New Italy Florida Man joined the game, England was wanting to, to bow out of the game. England began to offer Italy and I all their remaining centers in the hope of stopping Germany and France from winning the game or being included in the draw. England offered to give Portugal to Italy whilst also handing over Warsaw to me. When the orders processed, I noticed that I managed to get Warsaw, but failed in my goal of achieving Norway. Additionally, it looks like England is keeping up their agreements with Italy. However, one little nick in my plan for a solo is that I didn't get Norway. I'm not moving fast enough. Again, I begin to set myself up for a two-way draw with Italy at this point. The Italian Perspective At last, I, Florida Man, join the game in the dark days of Spring 1908. Well, they're not really that dark. More like a little cloudy with a chance of rain, but I am a bit worried. Although the Italian player before me had acquired Greece and half of Turkey, the alliance between them and Austria was clearly benefiting Austria more than Italy. Austria has taken over Russia and is poised to sweep through Germany at this point. More importantly, I'm concerned Austria might sweep me out of my own holdings, because my predecessor failed to negotiate Austria not having units in Tyrolia and the Adriatic Sea and Constantinople. If Austria turns on me at this point, I figure I'll probably end up in a stop the leader alliance because successfully attacking me now would bring them pretty close to solo. For now though, I continue attacking France as my predecessor seemed to be trying to do and I experience some success. The Austrian Perspective In fall, I ask England to support me from Warsaw into Livonia, that way offering myself some coverage in the Nordic regions. England agrees, sticking to their plan to bow out of the contest. I also asked England to attack Sweden to give myself the best possible opening in claiming Norway from England. When the orders finalize, everything went according to plan, but not for long. In the build phase, Italy asked me to hand over Constantinople and Bulgaria. If I didn't hand over these territories, then I'd be forced to fight a stop the leader alliance. I realized that my chance of a solo was dead and buried here. Additionally, Italy, whether through bluffing or through strong arming, had forced my hand. I conceded the centers immediately, in the hope that it would convince Italy to stay away from a stop the leader alliance. I also messaged France to ask them about the supposed alliance, and France all but confirmed it with a message that read, It shall be fun. Well, I hoped Italy would stick with me. The Italian Perspective In the fall, I more or less hold my own, unable to move much without risking losing something to France. Germany unfortunately stops issuing orders completely. That's unfortunate for me, really, because unlike Germany, France is defending itself quite vigorously. The eventual consequence of this will be that Austria proceeds too quickly through the German lands. But more on that soon. In the build phase, I threatened Austria and told him that if we didn't get closer to parity, I'd have to join the alliance the other players had formed against him. Austria and I agreed that I'd take a couple of centers off of him, Greece and Bulgaria. Austria had some hope this might convince the others that I was at war with Austria, and I was trying to sell that idea in group messages. I didn't really have any confidence it would work, but if it got France to move any units back away from the front with me, I thought I really might be able to achieve a two-power draw with Austria. The Austrian Perspective Spring 1909. I conversed with England, and they gave me Sweden willingly. In my messages with France, I implied that it was Germany, not Italy, that told me about a stop the leader alliance, in the hopes of polluting the German-French alliance. Finally, Italy and I agreed to continue our play-acting, so that it would look to the other players that Italy had attacked me and moved into Bulgaria and Constantinople. 
Germany does not enter any orders. Great for me. I've now surrounded them on all fronts, and the German defeat in this game is imminent. I do slightly worry about Italy's movements in this turn. In my mind, I'm worried about Trieste and the possibility of being stabbed, but my main goal is to knock out Germany with English support. The Italian Perspective Spring 1909, the half-baked plan to fake a fight between me and Austria, which for me is honestly more of a scheme to equalize my strength with Austria's, goes into action, and I walk into Constantinople. I also take Portugal. I wanted to pull back from France, hoping it would lend credence to the idea that I was turning to fight Austria, and at the same time England wasn't interested in playing anymore, so I obligingly eliminated them. Unfortunately, at this point, Austria is conquering Scandinavia, which is a sentence I should never have to utter in any game of diplomacy. Even saying those words out loud sounds faintly ridiculous. The Austrian Perspective Fall 1909 <laughs> What I'm about to tell you now is crucial. So, save it. It will come soon. In fall, I message France and beg at their feet. I tell them Italy was the leaker, and their movements into Constantinople were not planned at all. As I told France in my messages, do not trust Italy. Italy gets Bulgaria from me in the most staged attack ever, but yet I sell it to France like I've been attacked deliberately and betrayed with a mighty dagger. I tell France that once I'm done with Germany I can swing around and turn on the enemy Italy. A bad move for me, when the orders finalized, was the fact that I did not communicate with England in the fall, so I failed to get into Denmark. At this point, I still believed in a two-way draw between Italy and I. The Italian Perspective Fall 1909, I take Bulgaria. At the same time, despite my having told France I was pulling back from him to fight Austria, France takes the Mid-Atlantic Ocean. Austria continues to advance against Germany, which unfortunately reflects the fact that Germany had given up on the game and stopped entering orders. After this season's inactivity, we will get a new Germany, which means it's possible some anti-Austrian actions will be taken. However, the difficult thing for me is that France is still fighting and he's focusing on me rather than Austria, while Austria takes a brisk walk through the former German dominions and is poised to take French land as well. At this point, I'm strongly considering genuinely turning on Austria rather than faking a fight, but I try again the approach of negotiating with Austria so that we can remain close to parity. If Austria can just allow me to walk into a few more centers, I figure I could still pull out a two-way draw or a solo. If I can't do either of those things, my rating shield means that my rating on play diplomacy won't be affected, and a three power draw, at my level, is just as good as a loss for me. So, given that I have a rating shield and that a three power draw would be basically the same as a loss, I'm very reluctant to give up on the course I've embarked on at this point. In retrospect, I think that was a mistake. I should have gone after Austria, sometime around here, or maybe even earlier. In the build phase, I get an army and Austria builds a fleet, which makes this one of the first moments where Austria tries to really become a threat to me, rather than seeking to reassure me. The Austrian Perspective Spring 1910, Italy and I agreed to bounce each other in the Black Sea region, Constantinople and Romania bouncing. Great, I can continue to sell the idea of me being at war with Italy to the French diplomat. Additionally, Italy and I de-escalate our borders, allowing me to move Sevastopol onwards. This is a bad move for me, but once again, I have at this point conceded the possibility of a solo. If I wanted a solo, I would have kept in Sevastopol. When orders finalize, I've been attacked by France and Germany, but as I predicted to them, Italy is attacking them. Ha ha! At this point, it becomes impossible for France and Germany to win. Italy and I look like we are on course for a solo. The only worry I have is getting into a whack-a-mole with France on the English Isles. Additionally, I am worried about an Italian solo. But Germany is done, and France and Italy are locked in a war. All is good for me. I start to think about relaxing on this game, putting my units into defensive positions and waiting for the Italian to mop up. The Italian Perspective In spring 1910, Austria and I both make moves that are aimed at fighting each other, although we're both saying different things than that, pretending to be friendly. I'm moving to defend everything I have from Austria, and Austria is moving so that he'll be able to fight me if necessary with the fleet that Austria just built. However, I feel secure enough that I do continue to move against France. I'm aware that I can defend Venice, and given that I have that, 
I know that attacking me in general will be kind of difficult for Austria, especially with Austrian units dispersed as far away as they are. I'm not exactly comfortable here, because the main thing protecting me from Austria so far, and still, has been the power of my words. The Austrian Perspective Fall 1910. Pollute the waters for the win. Remember how I said this was a game of my pollute the waters tactic? Well, it worked. In the strangest of ways. I wake early for this season and notice I have a message from Germany and France, my enemies in this game. And they both want me to win! And they pretty much fall all over themselves to put me into positions that would see me solo. Germany sends me this. Austria. Italy has broken the trust that could have resulted in a three-way draw at your expense. He is showing what are probably his true colors, and they are greedy at that. It is important that you conserve your home centers and keep them vacant for three builds this year. I have delayed my retreat to provide time to consult with France. He is certainly one to speak for himself, but I believe he agrees that neither he or I have, sh have a shot. Here's what I will be doing. 1. I will disband Army Berlin rather than retreat to Kiel. This will allow you to walk into Kiel. Berlin and Kiel give you two builds. 2. In the build turn, I will, in the build turn, I will be down to two centers, London and Holland. I will disband Army Holland. It is yours in the spring. That leaves me with two fleets that will sail at France's discretion. 2. 3. Fleet Denmark will sail out in the spring. It is yours for the taking. It is also your solo victory. Germany. Additionally, France sends me this. How about this, guys? Norwegian Sea convoy, no convoy Norway to Edinburgh. Sweden moves to Denmark. Denmark moves to Skagerrak or Helgeland. Holland convoys to London via North Sea. Ruhr to Belgium. Berlin to Kiel. Silesia to Berlin. I think that would get you to 17 supply centers. We'll get you to Liverpool or London next spring. You'd win. Austria, take the win. I don't think you have some crazy deal of subterfuge with Italy. But, e but if you do, even so, take the win. You don't owe him anything. It's not that easy to solo in this game. At least it hasn't been for me, but I'm usually a straightforward and fairly loyal player. Take the win. Could it be so simple? My first win on the site? I am immediately suspicious of this deal. And I tell the two nations straight up that I s suspect it to be a ruse. Because I know the orders of France and Germany, I tell Italy to watch how they enter. I tell them not to move into the English Channel, as I know from what France messaged that they'll bounce in the Channel. Additionally, I tell him that any move to Gascony won't work, because of how France has entered his orders. I was actually wrong on that. So this turn, I play both moves. I play the moves France and Germany want me to make, because if they're wrong, it won't harm me too much. Additionally, I play the moves that will benefit Italy, because if France and Germany are luring me into a ruse, then at least I still have my key ally for the two-way draw. After finalization, I am stunned. Except for the convoy to Edinburgh, everything goes to plan. Here is where it should have been the worst case scenario. It is at this point that my Italian friend demands more territory off me. I refuse Italy's offer. In my head at least, I believe that he and I already had a natural stalemate line between us. By this I mean we could not move on each other's land because we were both highly militarized in that area. We could not, to my knowledge, hold any invasion that we make. Italy, rightly so, blasts me and calls a three-way draw. I sulk in my seat. At this point, I've lost my solo and my two-way draw. I try desperately to make myself feel better by eating a tub of ice cream. I will have to concede. But not for long. France refuses the three-way draw. The game is still on. I am still fighting for my solo. The Italian Perspective Fall 1910, Austria moves a couple of units south, so I believe the situation between the two of us is coming to a head. I've lost any opportunity I might have had to surprise attack Austria effectively, and after all the effort I've put in to try and control Austria with negotiation, it seems that I've failed. And Austria is not going to let me have any additional centers, and might even be about to try and take some centers from me. In the build phase, I get a fleet while Austria gets two new armies, which was not something he had a choice in, since he had occupied Trieste to protect it from my potential backstab earlier which means I'll at least control the seas in the conflict that's brewing. And I also have a pretty strong defensive position around Venice, so there are bright spots to this situation. The Austrian Perspective Spring 1911. 
The game is pretty much mine at this point. In spring 1911, I'm still messaging Italy. I still believe Germany and France will stab me, but the negotiations between Italy and I continually break down as we dispute borders. The most I can do at this point is move on Sevastopol. If France and Germany sell me out, then the least I can do is to round the back and into Turkish territories that way. France tells me that they'll convoy me into Edinburgh, while also putting me into Belgium. I move all my other units in a way that will be able to hold the line as it was. The Italian Perspective Spring 1911, Austria and I are now, very transparently, working to fight each other. As a result of that, I'm talking to France again, and I propose a three-power draw that would include France as a gesture, showing that I want to work together. Unfortunately, although I'm now trying to get France to make peace with me, France rejects the proposal I made and responds badly to all of my messages to the extent that he responds at all. France is just very interested in dragging me down at this point, I suppose, but that motivation is frankly sort of baffling for me. It's always strange to me when players who could be included in a draw and aren't even on the brink of death choose to reject survival in favor of spiting the other players, especially when, as in this game, I hadn't actually done very much to France successfully. Oh well, though. This season, France convoys Austria into Edinburgh, which drastically reduces the importance of my movements to counter Austria in the Balkans, because no matter how tactically skillful I am there, if the other powers are choosing to throw Austria solo by giving Austria centers that he could never have reached without them, I really can't stop that. The Austrian Perspective Fall 1911. And the rest, they say, is history. The map speaks for itself. Austrian victory. The Italian Perspective Fall 1911. This is the final season. France and Germany do indeed choose to give Austria the win. Austria was probably going to win in any case, because I was reliant on Austria essentially choosing not to go for the solo here, and even though I did a pretty good job of positioning to defend Greece and Bulgaria and the Turkish centers in these last seasons, I would have inevitably lost that ground to Austria's superior forces eventually in any case. So I say, good for Austria that he went for the prize. Naturally, I'm a little disappointed I didn't get it myself, but that's what happens sometimes. The most frustrating thing here, really, is France and Germany seemingly being happy to cut their noses off despite their face. In the case of France, unlike me or Germany, he was the original player for the French position, which means he did not have a rating shield, which means that, unlike me, he actually harmed his own rating on play diplomacy. And it was just to see me lose, seemingly. This is not something that the theoretical, rational human should do, but there's a lesson there somewhere about the irrationality of even people who play intellectual games like Diplomacy. I hope you enjoyed this after-action report all, despite the terrible, no-good, rotten impression I did for the Austrian segment. Please support the channel with your likes and your subscriptions and discussion in the comments section below, and hopefully my next video will have less horrible voice work than this one. Talk to you soon. Florida Man, out.